In the last video, we saw how we could calculate an average high temperature on rainy days in a single pass using a fold left. I want to do this in one other way using a flat map. And we talked about the fact that we could take a filter followed by a map followed by a sum and then work from that. That would take three passes through the data. I can also do this through with a flat map. So the fold left did this in a single pass. The flat map will allow me to do the map and the filter at the same time. And it's, it's actually more general than that. Uh, but it's an example of how we can use the flat map, which does have various uses, the things that can be hard to duplicate without using it. And a lot of times people have a hard time understanding exactly what a flat map does. So how about we do, we're going to make a rainy temps collection. And as promised, this is going to take a flat map. Now a flat map is very much like a map. A map just applies a function to every element of the collection and then makes a collection of the results. Well, what if the function produces another sequence? So in this case, we have an array. What if our the function that we were using in here produced another array? Well, then we'd have an array of array of whatever type uh, was created. Sometimes you want that, in which case a map is fine, but sometimes you don't. And so what flatten does is it kind of flattens that out. In fact, you can, on collections, get the same result as a flat map by calling map first and then calling flatten afterwards. That'll be less efficient, though, because it'll go through the two separate operations to, to do that. The flat map will run through one time. It's expecting every call to produce a collection, and then it just strings all the results in, the, in all of those collections together to make one bigger collection. And one of the advantages of this is each call, while it could, so it could produce multiple values, it could produce just one value, like a normal map, or it could produce zero. It could be an empty sequence. And that's really what we're going to do with it here, is that I am getting a temperature data element. And if the TD elements precip is less than 1.0, I don't want it. So I'm going to give back an empty sequence. Actually, let's see, seq empty. I could also call nil and just give back an empty list. Else, I want to give back a sequence that has just the temperature for this data, because I'm up for this date, because I'm only doing temperatures. Basically, I'm doing the equivalent of a filter and a map in a single pass through the data here. So I'm going to make a sequence around td.t max. Okay. And how about we then print line instead of rainy sum, this would be rainy temps dot sum and rainy temps dot length. Now of course because I had to call sum here, I am doing a second pass through my smaller collection. Uh, if for doing this particular calculation the fold is going to be a more efficient way of approaching this. But I did want to illustrate how the flat map can do this, and it's good to see those two get the, the same result. Once again, producing the same result in multiple different ways is a good way to know that your code is correct. And it's very hard to mess things up when you're doing different approaches in ways, so you mess two things up in different ways but somehow get the, the same result. That's generally unlikely. So it, it's a simple test to, to make sure that you're doing things well. In this case, what matters more is I wanted to show you a potential use of flat map because it can be a useful operation for us in, in future processing that we're going to do.